gentlemen, welcome back to WCS Season 2 Finals. Fabulous couple of games. Uh, I don't think we could have asked for anything better than what we got. Two amazing matches between our four players, but we are now down to just six left on the hunt for a global glory. Chobra, that last game was insane. So insane. and. I was just waiting in anticipation, and I don't know for what, because, you know, either player winning would have been great, but sitting there, watching the game, every single mistake or success from the players, really rousing emotion from all the viewers, I believe, and in the end, Jadong saying it himself, the tyrant is back, how far can he go? But we'll have to hold off on that one, don't we? Yes, we do have to wait for that one. Let's show you the bracket and update you as to where we are score-wise so far. We've already lost two of our round of eights, as you can see at the top of the screen. Alive and Naniwa are gone. Round of eight finishes for both. First, we'll play Jadong in our first semi-final tomorrow. But for now, we're looking at the lower half of the quarter-final. And our first matchup, I mean, all quarterfinals are crazy anyway, but we just seem to be blessed with phenomenal games. Could this be another one? It's Tasia up against Rain. Your thoughts, Chobra? I believe that Tasia is riding a lot of momentum right now. Beat out Innovation in a brilliant match, too. It wasn't any sort of cheese. It wasn't sort of a quick match. He found the errors, and he took advantage of them. Then there's Rain, who had a tougher road, but he has a lot of redemption, right? He showed us that last year in the OSL Star League that he could play well, but then with Heart of the Swarm, he's been a little bit faltering and also losing to Maru at the finals of WCS Korea. This guy's back for revenge against really anyone at this point to take his title back. Absolutely. Tasia's been playing fantastically over the last two days. Let's see if he can keep that momentum up in the round of eight. It's time to introduce you to our third quarterfinal members. The first contender we'll be inviting to the stage. He remains among many of the players who actually have been eliminated as this season's champions or runner-ups. It's going to be the runner-up coming from WCS Korea, none other than SK Telecom T1 Raid. in the complete juxtaposed position. If you like rain, that's fine. But this man is the sun god. When the sun shines, he wins tournaments. Please make some noise for Liquid Tasia. Time to go over to our commentary team. They've got a bit of a Blues Brothers thing going on. Please make some noise for Apollo and Todd. Thank you, everybody, and welcome back to the Season 2 Finals, where shit's got real here, Todd, because the games are serious, the games are awesome, and it's only going to continue with our next map, Tasia versus Rain. What a third quarter final game. Yeah, uh, Rain, he's, he has such a strong Protoss versus Terran, and he's going to have a huge obstacle in front of him with Teja. Teja has been playing so well in this tournament as well, uh, playing really well in the WCS America. Uh, I'm so excited for this match. I really can't call it either. Like, I have a personal preference, which you can probably guess uh, which one, uh, who, who it is. I'm going to guess it's Protoss. Rain, just a little bit. <laughs> but uh, I think these players are so evenly matched right now. This is such an interesting matchup in a lot of uh, different aspects of it. I mean, this is just, I mean, there's two ways to look at it. You have Rain right now, is the second place finisher from WCS Korea, who practiced only against Terran and succeeded so well until the finals. And then on the other side of things, Teja, as Red I mentioned, seems to perform when the sun is shining in the summertime. As last year, 2012, he got three big tournament wins. This year, he's got two. This could be his hat trick if he's able to beat Rain. I don't want to be too cheesy, but. It was raining a little bit early, <laughs> not too sunny. <laughs> so uh, we're going to see what these players choose to remove here. Neil Planet uh, by Teja, Star Station for Rain. Completely agree with this. Star Station is one of the most difficult maps to deal with these drops. The, you can't force field too much around your, your third base as well. So uh, I, I have to say, perfect first uh, map removal by Rain here. 
And I, and I know you know Rain's playstyle very well. Can you describe his playstyle coming into this game against Tasia and how these, uh, or at least Star Station, will affect it coming up against Tasia? Uh, I think it's he's going to be thinking about what maps he has to play on and who he's playing against, and then he's going to come up with builds, different builds. If he thinks there's going to be a command center first, he might go for a proxy. He's, Rain is like that. He plays depending on the map. We've seen him play actually some uh, some uh, very interesting series. I think it was versus Bomber when he did a different build in every single game mm. and he made all of those builds work I think, except in one of the maps that he lost. But then again, in finals versus Maru, it didn't go so well when he played in WCS Korea. So this time, uh, he, has, he has a chance at redemption here. He's, he's practiced so much in this matchup. His practice paid off, I guess you could say halfway because he did take second. He did not get that final championship and now he's going to want to correct that uh, here and take the first place. Well, a couple of rumors uh, backstage from the professional players. A lot of them are actually predicting Rain to win the entire tournament. A lot of the Korean professionals. But one thing that we've heard is that Rain, after losing the finals against Moro two games to four, just just kind of exploded emotionally, put a lot of hard work into it, and it just all fell apart from him in the finals. He then didn't practice for quite a while after that. He's so far in this tournament avoided Terran players. He's now going up against the first Terran player that he's have to face. All that practice that he put in, that he poured in, all that effort to go to the WCS Korea Premier League Finals, he needs to get back to that man. He needs to bring back what he learned, what he taught himself, if he wants to stop Tasia. Yeah, and uh, one thing to keep in mind here, one of Rain's teammates is parting, one of the best pros versus Terran as well. They have different styles, but I think if you consulted with Sparting and uh, usually SKT1 players, they do that a lot. Mm. They talk between coaches, players, they talk about strategies, they tell each other build orders before those big series they have to play and then they come up with some quite innovative builds sometimes, some very interesting ways to go into matches. If that happened here, we might actually see a different side of him. If he thinks uh, some of Parting's build might be a little bit, a little bit better than his own, uh, he might be mixing it up with some early Templars, something like that. But what I'm expecting overall out of Rain, even though I think there's a good chance he might mix it up, is just this, that solid Colossus into Templar play that we've seen so much and being so successful so far uh, from Bolos' player against Terran in this tournament. Well, Teji's been quite successful himself this season with a lot of big wins against a lot of fantastic players. Look at his win rates, very high, 75% against Protoss, incredibly wow. high. And then this tournament, he's played some of the best StarCraft that I've seen from Tasia in a very long time. The 2-1 win against Innovation, incredible series. And then he made Duck Duck look like nothing, who was the European number one representative here. Tasia's on form, he hasn't lost the game yet. Yeah, it definitely is. Uh, Rain, though. His best matchup is Terran. We, we've said it many times. Uh, problems against Protoss before, but so far he's, he's faced his demons in this tournament and he has done pretty well against Protoss as well. He only lost to Jadon uh, so far, so 78% uh, against Terran. I don't even know what to add to this. 78% against Terran players. Just look at the list of players he's beat so far this season. Keen, Bomber, Fantasy, Supernova, 4-1 against Bomber, and then all of a sudden that final against Moro where everything just fell apart, two games to four. And of course he started off his season finals here not as strong as he would have hoped, losing to Jadon, then making the comeback into Welmu, finally MC. But now's the time to shine. We're in the quarterfinals. If he's able to win this best of five, he gets closer and closer to back-to-back -back finals. Yeah, and... Uh he could, if he wins this, he could potentially face another Terran in the next round as well, which I'm sure, I mean, if you beat Teja, you, you can yeah. take on any Terran. I mean, the next quarterfinal underneath this is Bomber versus Scarlet. If Bomber was to beat Scarlet, then as you say, another Terran player moves through, where ultimately we could see some excellent play again from Rain. But it is all now on the line to play for the money, the WCS points, the glorious trophy, the shiny trophy on the front of the stage. It is all now or never for both of these players. Best of five, first players to get three wins. The other one's out, the other one moves through. And Derelict Watcher uh, is actually a quite diffi difficult map, in my opinion, uh, to play Protoss versus Terran on, but that's my personal opinion. I thought that was the general Protoss opinion, but they have done quite decent against Terran uh, on this map. Well, and when I say quite decent, I mean they've done really, really well overall. 
even on this map. So uh, I think Rainy might not worry too much here about the map. He's just going to try and go for his own style, his own play, and uh, make it work from there. That's what he does. Well, Rain has a very defensive style here. That's what got him the success he had before the finals. Morrow broke him down. Tej is a different type of player here. We'll see what Tej can do up against the defensive titan that is Rain. As we're about to begin the third quarter finals now. As mentioned, a best of five. I don't know which ones this, which ways it's going to go. Do you have any predictions before we get into it? Uh, three, two, four, either. Three, two, five. Or a close series there predicted. We'll see how this is going to shape up. SK Telecom going up against Team Liquid. We're about to begin the third quarter final. I hope you guys are ready for this one. This can prove to be an epic series because down here in the bottom left hand side, he needs to gather his thoughts from his previous training. His name is SK Telecom One's Reign. goes up against a player we all know very well from the team and Liquid, he is Tasia. I'm actually, I'm really curious, does Rain open for a very standard play here or does he try to gain the momentum, open up with something crazy to basically, even if he loses, he could put doubt in Tasia's head as to which style he's going to be playing in this very important match here. I guess we're going to find out very soon, uh, and I can't wait. I, I really feel that Rain's going to approach this series in in a normal game, just like he beat all the players, just like he beat Form, uh, Bomber 4-1 before. I think he's going to mix things up throughout the series, but in general play the same style that he's had the most success with. I don't think he'd want to mix it up, because if he mixes it up in game number one, I think all those doubts might come pouring back from the finals that he played not long ago, just a week and a half ago. Very good point, actually, yeah. So you predict a uh, very standard play. Very standard play, Double super gas. defensive. Very Double gas goal. could definitely, I mean, you, you, you're the professional here. Double gas, what are the options that double gas now means from Rain? What can he do with this? If he goes for, I didn't see if he went for gate 12, but uh, I think he went for gate 13, but he could, okay, no, he gets the second pile on his main. That's, that's not gonna be a super fast star gate on the map, but look where the probe is going. Is he scouting for double racks or something? Or is he sending that to proxy something? I think he wants to proxy something, but a nice stalker, huh? illusion. <laughs> wow, we'll see. I didn't expect him to start things with a bang here, but the way that the probe's gone across the map seems to be the way that Rain wants to start up this series against Teja, who, on his side of things, opened up one barracks command center. This could be Dark, Dark Templars or Stargates. It could be either. And uh, I mean, Teja is going to scout, he's going to see how much gas is being mined right now for Rain. Mm -hmm. He's going to know there's the possibility of Dark Templar, Stargates, and uh, from there, he, f he should be throwing down an engineering bay, trying to do a little bit more scouting, but since he hasn't gone for a Reaper, it seems less likely that he's going to scout the proxy, which is, by the way, a Stargate. Well, Tasia's builds against Duck Duck earlier on in this tournament were focused around Command Center first and One Barracks Command Center. It makes perfect sense that we see a Stargate coming down here, and I'm quite sure it's going to be an Oracle looking to get into that Minerai and looking to hurt Tasia. And uh, he definitely can. Yeah, yeah. I want to see where Tija scouts, because he's going to have to scout uh, out on the map right now. He saw that there was three plus three on the gases. He saw that there wasn't that uh, many probes on the minerals. So uh, he, has to, he has to focus on his scouting here to make sure he does not get tricked. But he's not sending out any Marines or his SCV. He's just sending it back, back home right now. I'm a little bit surprised, I have to say. Well, Tasia, with not scouting this, the Oracle has a high High potential to do a lot of damage here. There's nothing in the mineral line, though the Marines are moving their way back from the natural here. He's and coming into the mineral line, into, well, at least into the main. Look at this. Oh, he's getting a bunker up his run. That's interesting. I really thought he was going to throw down a bunker at his expansion, but I guess he doesn't know what it is now. And since he doesn't want to bother trying to scout what it is, he's going to play safe against everything. This bunker helps against Blink Stalkers, uh, I mean, against air. No units can get into the main. He can get enough Marines to defend his mineral line. Oh, Although he has just one Marine right now. Yeah, the Stalkers pulled the Marines out of position here. The Oracle is going to go straight for that mineral line. How many SUVs are going to go down? The evacuation is pulled. One, two, so far. A third one may go down. It does, but only three kills here. Yeah, so not the best damage, but enough. I mean, he's just lost a little bit more than the shields on his Oracle. He's going to fly in there. He has to be careful at this point, actually. The Stalker, actually, a lone Stalker makes the natural uh, fly back into the main. The Orbital Commander is going to fly back. And in the meantime, Ren is taking his own expansion. I wouldn't be surprised if he throws 
down a robo from there, and text, text to Colossus, he's not using his Stargate anymore. So is this, is this a success, would you say, here from Rain, as the robotics facility does come down? Yeah, yeah, it was a success. I mean, it wasn't the best scenario, obviously. He could have killed a lot more if Teja had, had been a little bit more sloppy. Mm -hmm. uh, it was good enough, and Teja is killing this. The damage was not too big, and uh, Teja is just going to look to take to Medivax from there and probably do a huge attack with lots of Marines, which, against a target opener like this, you always want to do. That's why Rain, I think he's going to try to rush to Colossus, and nice can. He yes. sees the Robo and the Forge as well. Yeah, he sees the Robo, he sees the follow-up here, he realizes exactly what's going on now, can piece together that the Nexus has come down in between these additional structures. And it's Stim now, it's halfway to being complete. The Starport's coming down as well. Do you think there's an opportunity here for Tasia to, you know, get some damage done before we see Colossus come into play? Um, I think he knows there's going to be a photon or a charge up on time uh, if he hits the timing. One thing he could do is move out to four sentries uh, from being made, but right now, he did see the robot, but I think he doesn't know exactly about how many gates there are made by Teja, so, uh, by Rain. So he doesn't know exactly how many units there are. Whoa, I'm surprised Rain is flying in there like, like this. Yeah, a little bit risky, but he does get away with the, just a little bit of shield damage on the Oracle, but gets full scouting information and sees a very normal game coming out from Teja. Nothing weird at all with the starport now being switched over. He gets that scout as well. Maybe even able potentially to pick up an SCV or two. But so far, so normal here. Just three SCV kills from that Oracle, and just the follow-up coming in from Rain. Yeah, he's going to start adding extra gateways. Only one so far. I'm surprised. Supposedly, you should throw down two, but I guess he's making probes very continuously, and he's going to want to start his first Colossus uh, as soon as possible. And he's actually made just one lone observer before going to Colossus. Mm. Since you want to make Col Colossus continuously, he's not going to be able to get more observers later on, but he has the Oracle doing that job of scouting and... Uh, He's doing a pretty good job of it. Yeah, he's got an uh, eyes-on approach now to these Marines. He's going to be able to see where they are, where they move. But in the main base of Tasia now, we do have a medevac being lifted up with a bunch of units. And it's going to go over and well, at least kill off the pylon and Stargate over here. Or he, uh, I guess he could have ignored this and try and drop in the natural, but he knows that Rain's defense is just too good in general. So he's going to try to kill the pylon maybe and supply block him. So, I mean, we all know that Rain's one of the most defensive players out there. Where is Tasia's key to success if he's going to win this series? Where is it going to be? Because it may not be through a being aggressive, being like an MMA, being all over the place with drops. Where would it be? I think the key would be to play to his best strengths, just to try and adapt, uh, out multitask his opponent, and then just play a good macro game. And if he has an opportunity to, to kill his opponent, just go for it. But nice can again went down in the main of Tasia, and it saw the the Robo still being chrono boosted, the Forge and the Twilight Council as well. So. This is, this is actually the standard timing on the Twilight, but right now, Ren is doing something very interesting. He's cut Colossus production after one. Mm. So I think he goes into charge from there, and uh, possibly Templars with very quick storm. He's, he's going to try to trick his opponent into making Vikings. We'll see if that's the case here, as these medivacs are trying to chase down that Oracle. But we are now moving out, or at least Tage is moving out, should I say. An Oracle, uh, sorry, an Immortal is on its way, a Zealot charge, but yeah, he's with getting one the Templar Colossus... Arcade. Is he, has he got enough to defend here? Of course he has the Mothership Core with a Photon Overcharge. I think so. Uh, I mean, he only has 30 supply against 46, but uh, he's going to be making units out of his four gateways. And, and it, with the Immortal on the way, I mean, he's surely going to have enough, especially with the Photon Overcharge. There's no way Teja can breach it. Whoa, Rain is moving out. Oh, and look at that hallucinated Colossus here, trying to play to the image you... Uh, oh, the Oracle? Oh, it gets fixed. This is... This wasn't supposed to happen here. Hmm. And look at his stage, a second starport. Yeah, this is going to be pretty good for uh, Rain. Yeah, I love this hallucinated Colossus there. Really playing to the image he's trying to build. When in reality, we have Storm coming in. Is there a potential now from Rain to flip things upside down and be aggressive? There's not going to be a Ghost Academy any soon. Uh, surely he can hit a timing with High Templar here. Uh, I think there is, but you have to be very careful because you can overextend very easily. And against a Terran player like Teja, even if you have Four storms ready, he can still hold, and then from there we'll win almost every single time if you throw away your Templars. So I think you need at least four to five storms ready and a perfect positioning and attack. Well, currently he's got two eye Templar, a third one just got warped in here. At least he may be able to call an evacuation on the third base for, uh, for Tasia, but on Rain's third base, we do have a factory and a uh, widow mine and a dead zealot. He might try and take the other one from there. Uh, Rain doesn't have. Oh, did he just scan and kill the observer? Mm -hmm. Well, wow, he's been Teja has been doing a great job of killing the observers. There is only one out right now on the map for Rain, and it's on the bottom right hand side to make sure he can spot those drops 
uh, possibly headed for his main. And Teja has figured out what's going on, by the way. He's, he only made one Viking. He's got the Ghost Academy down, Mobius Rector on the way as well. So he hasn't been tricked too much by this. Oh, and Rain is going to move out here. He knows the units of Teja might be uh -oh. at third base. Well, he should be able to get out of here, no problem. Would have been uh, nice if he got some feedbacks on those medivacs, but they're going to retreat home. And now Rain needs to really get his third base down. And if we wow. think about things, Teja's had his third down for quite a while. Yeah, and Teja, he, he's just playing so solid. Look at how much he delayed the third base from being taken. We're almost at the 14th minute in this professional high-level games. You can see Protoss just take a base at 10.30 sometimes uh, against the third base from a Terran. And now Rain, on 14 minutes, he started his third base. He's going to be so far behind economically. He's on 51 probes against 68 STVs now. And Teja is starting to make ghosts. This is looking really, really bad for Rain. Well, where does Rain go then from here? Where, where does he go if it's looking bad? Remember? I mean, he's just got to wait until he's, you know, maxed out and got his upgrades going. And I don't think he can really be aggressive any time on I this map. I think he needs to look back at uh, first versus alive and just try to pull some of the same move with the Templars, get some great feedbacks, get some great storms. And then I think that's going to be the only way he can win. Although, Rain is doing a pretty good job of keeping oh. up with the supply here. Look, look at this, with the high Templar hiding behind the smoke. <laughs> well, the Zealot's going to poke forward here and reveal the area. This could be quite a deadly move. Oh, they actually have lots of energy. Oh, one of those getting attacked. Well, one of them gets attacked and this didn't really work. A nice sneak, atta uh, sneak attack attempt, but didn't work. He's got to be very careful not to lose these high tempo. One goes down, the other one escapes, but does waste out a storm. Teja does not fall victim to this. And a plus three on the way here uh, by Teja. He's really exploiting mm. uh, his superior economy. He's adding lots of extra barracks on his third base as well. And... He's getting cloaked now. This is, this is really, really looking good for Tejar. I'd be really shocked uh, if Rain won this. Nice swap with him tonight, by the way. Uh, manually targeting with the bunker. Yeah, and the bunker's going to uh, just about survive here, I think. It's oh. very close. Whoa, Tejar might go for a fight here. Oh, he definitely could. There's uh, only one cost at the moment. The second one on its way. Oh, decent storm on the edge of that bio army. These ghosts really need to get in there. There's five of them. Look the romance how only just now started as well. Look at how much supply there is by Rain in his main. He's, he's got Templars everywhere, actually, like, kind of like Widow Mines on the map right now. This is interesting. Oh, big storm there by Rain as Tasia marches forward. Still another storm on the right-hand side, not as successful as the first one. There is another high temper up there looking to get its damage done. Rain is uh, in supply. Uh oh He's in the supply lead. Ah, it's picked off there. Look at how many Templars there are out uh, by the natural of Rain. He's sending one of those towards the army of Teja. A Marine might spot it here. Teja doing great work, but nice feedback. Nice feedback there, nice play here by Teja. He's not taking too much damage, but two Colossus are there. Still without Thermal Arts, Teja dealing a lot of damage. Oh, good Storm on the right-hand side. Zealot's coming down as well here. Te Rain is falling. He is falling to supply, warps it a lot more, but he's dealing with this quite well. Great second and third Storm there. And, uh, well, I guess Rain took a page out of the first book here. Uh, defending this perfectly with the Templars everywhere. I feel like Terrence, if they put down a Sensor Tower at this point in the game and just press forward, make sure they don't get stormed before the Sensor Tower is out, they would do a lot better at this. Because, yeah. I mean, as observers now, we see everything that's happening, but as Terran, you only see a, the very small area around your army. That's why, that's why Teja keeps getting stormed like this. He only sees what's mm. the small part around his army. He doesn't have vision of the entire map, otherwise it would be too easy, obviously. And uh, that's the only reason this storm and movements with Templars are working. So Teja needs to keep uh, on trying to get as many scans down as possible. And uh, if he does not get his army stormed too many times, he should be able to win a fight. Although now we're starting to have quite a lot of Colossus out on the map. I mean, both of the players have the tools necessary. They both have Colossus, they both have Vikings, they both have Ghost, they both have High Templar. But do the upgrades of Teja, how much of an impact are they going to make here? Yeah, I lot. mean, the upgrades are really weak for Rain. Yeah, being 3-2 already. Uh, the Viking count, though, is not, not that high. Nine Vikings right now against four Colossus and uh, Rain still throwing down some great storms. Blink is underway, plus two as well uh, by Rain. Ooh, he's gonna go for it. Oh, oh, some blanket EMPs there coming in from Tasia. A storm's gonna have to be necessary if he's gonna be able to take this fight. The Colossus are dying immediately here. Wow, and look at Teja's army, the stutter stepping with his main bio force never Whoa, stopped here. Oh, absolutely glorious movement here from Teja coming down the right hand side, moving back along the zealots. This bio force is standing strong and Rain is dropping in supply down to 100. And Liquid Teja is just marching forward and there doesn't seem anything left. GG! Teja with a little smile there. <laughs>
cheeky little grin coming out from Liquidasia. He earned this one. Uh, that was that was insane micro here. I can't I can't stress how hard this is. Mm. You need to attack. Make sure you keep on stutter stepping, and at the same time. You need to keep up with your micro. You don't want to end the fight with uh, a dead army or an army with very little hit points because of steam pack and have like 2,000 minerals. So that's really, really hard to do what Teja just did and he somehow pulled it off against a rain that's oh so good versus Terran. And here are the last few moments. I think uh, there's the smile from Teja, <laughs> but more importantly, just remember the last four games that Rain played against Terran players were four losses in a row. He won the first two games against Moore in the finals of WCS Career Premier League, but then he lost four in a row and has now lost a, lost a fifth game against Terran in a row now. Yeah, he's going to have to keep his composure, make sure he does not lose focus here. Uh, he's Rain. He can, he's the one player who can make things happen for his Terran, but this game, he just got dominated from the start. I mean, he had some nice moves in the VIP game, but he, he was already so far behind and... Uh, I feel like even though this, this Oracle did a little bit of damage in the start, Teja was always in, always in control in the game. From the moment he's landed his factory on the third and put a Widow Mine there, which is yep. not particularly always supposed to happen, he was in perfect control of this game. Well, remember Teja of 2012 when he did win those three big tournaments, the MLG Arena, Asus ROG, and DreamHack Valencia. After these three big wins, and even a second place at DreamHack Winter, if I remember correctly, his wrist become a problem. He had injuries to play StarCraft, but he's been rebuilding himself since then. He's now already got two tournament victories this summer, and I'll repeat it again, is playing some absolutely beautiful StarCraft at the Season 2 Finals. You think he can repeat uh, his previous performances, take this tournament? Well, the three tournaments he played at last year, I think we're not even half the skill level that this tournament is. It's definitely a massive feat. If Teja can do well here and win the Season 2 Finals, then Teja's back to how he used to play, and if not stronger than ever before. He would actually get really high on the WCS World Ranking. Yeah, he's currently ranked 10th. Currently ranked 10th with a win here that awards so many points. He might actually take first or second, something like that. You get uh, like 3,000 points exactly oh, uh, for being first place. Teja right now sits on 2,750. With a first place victory here, he goes first place over Innovation, a player that's been at the top since the beginning. Jadong, though, he's second right now in, the, in that ranking. That's right, man. And Jadong and Teja. <laughs> those who played for the finals, it depend on who won, who would be number one. Interesting, though, the way that the WCS is shaping up. We're, we were near the end of the season two finals. And the top 16 is changing with every game right now. With every single game, players move up, players move down. And for each of these players, the ultimate goal here, of course, is to win $40,000 in first place here, but to play at BlizzCon. A major tournament, 16 of the best worldwide. Tasia's ready. Rain has to be ready now. He cannot let this affect him that he's lost a lot of games in a row. As we get ready for our next map here on Whirlwind. Four player map down here in the bottom left. Bottom left is the red Protoss. He goes by SK Telecom One's Rain. As the blue Protoss playing some absolutely incredible StarCraft over this weekend. Playing for Team Liquid, he is Teja! Teja was just perfect control in the first game. And uh, I have to say, if I was Rain here, I, I would have a very, very hard time staying calm. Like you said, it, he's lost four games in a row in the WCS Korea Finals. And now he, lo he lost this first game. And he looked a little bit shaken up. Uh, at the victory screen when we played that video where you see the, the expressions on the player's face as one of them leave, it looked a little bit like Rain was actually... He was taking the loss very hardly. I mean, uh, on his face, you could see that a little bit. So uh, he's going to have to stay focused here, make sure... Whoa, he's cutting very early, actually. I guess on Whirlwind, like, we've seen more and more of that mm -hmm. because you want to know as soon as possible if you're up against the command center first. But this could also be... Oh, is he taking the second gas? A proxy target again. That's very possible here. Command Center first is a build that Teja 100% used on Whirlwind against Doug Duck in this tournament. It makes sense, and luckily for Rain, he's scouting last position here. 
And I say that even though it sounds weird, is that by process of elimination, yeah. he's, he's going to know that his opponent's not top left. He's going to know his opponent's not top right. And he can just automatically throw down the Stargate. And if he's presuming that his opponent's going to go command center first by scouting so early, he doesn't even need to scout Teja. But, he can just do it. But do you think that Teja will ever not scout here? I think he's going to scout here. Yeah, look, he's sending an SUV. It's, this is more important. I mean, if Frame goes for a proxy and Teja doesn't scout it, which actually he did in this, the last game, but he was just preparing for everything, uh, things could get really bad very quickly. And look through where he skewed his SUV. Through that area on the right side where there could be a proxy something. Well, with these probes crossing paths, how, I mean, what goes through Teja's mind upon seeing this? Probe scout. Does he think that it's a bit of a later one come from top left? Does he think that it's an early one come from bottom left? He's now seen it. You can't really know. I think he's going to have to confirm uh, that Rain is not on the top left. But uh, then again, with Teja, you never know. He might be able from there to realize that this is cross map. You know, he's, he's a superhuman. Yeah. I'm not. Well, Rain's got two in gas. He's not got three. He's got the Nexus down already. And it doesn't look like he's going to even attempt to uh, try anything too crazy. I'm surprised he took two gases this early if he was going to play like this. On this map, oh wow, the probe is going to be able to get out of here. On this map, a good build order that you can do to make sure you don't fall too far behind uh, economically is the one gate, one gas expand with the Zello that you cancel at the last second. A lot of players choose to do that on this map, but Rain, uh, he seems to really like his double gas uh, opener, even before 786 score. Well, Teja is not going to have any information, any clues, but if we just look at patterns from the previous game, Teja was scanning all the time, looking at what Rain was up to. He's not going to get any confirmation with this SUV. The Stalker should be able to push it away. And as the Mothership Core does come in, just as a look, there's three Marines to push it back. A okay, pretty quick robo by Rain Standard here. I wouldn't be surprised if he throws down a Forge very shortly after that. And uh, interesting placement on that last barracks that Teja just made just on top of the refinery here. What happens if he wants to make... Okay, he's going to fix it immediately by moving the barracks. And what does Teja see? I don't think he's going to see the robo. Sees nothing, unfortunately, there. One thing about Rain that I've noticed uh, of all his games this season in the WCS uh, Korea Premier League is that he stays on one forge for a very, very long time. He much prefers to have out the units, the right units, rather than the right upgrades. For example, he would much rather go Colossus and Fast over High Templar and just forget about upgrading off double forges for a long time in this game. Does it, is that a good style to have? Does it not affect him? Because in the last game, he was quite far behind in upgrades for almost all the fights, if not every fight. He was far behind on upgrades because he was far behind economically and all his tech was delayed because of that. But this is actually the way that every Protoss have been playing recently, uh, Protoss vs. Stan. You just get one forge because if you get two, you're going to have a lot less units. You're not going to have the gas to get everything that you want to get. So usually these days, the standard in the matchup, you get your second forge as you start your Templar Archive or just a little bit later. And that's after you've gone for Colossus, so mm. quite late. Well, the robotic bay is on its way now for Rain as well as plus one armor. Neither player have got any information until that wow, sound that we just heard, which is a scan that sees nothing. Or the SCV, gonna try to sneak into the main. Also nothing. And you know, Teja might start suspecting something crazy here, like a Dark Templar drop or something like that. I guess we're at 740 and it hasn't hit yet. Well, he's built a turret here just in case. Yeah. And always, is he gonna scan for the observer in the main? Rain turns around with it. There was an observer about to enter the main. Rain very nicely so saw the Marines and moved back. And uh, yeah, I think Teja wants to deny scouting here. He knows that if Rain knows what you're doing, it's going to be very hard to, to beat him, let's just say that. Well, Rain saw the factory, so he knows exactly his opponent's build here. He knows that there was no third command center rush. He spots the gases on the natural, and he's got quite a bit of information here. It looks like the Observer will maybe and get picked off. No, 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 he doesn't have a scan, actually. Teja oh. is bluffing. <laughs> That's pretty cool. He wanted the Observer to leave at this point, and uh, this is not going to work. Rain reads through this. He sees the energy uh, on the second orbital command, and... Well, there's energy now, 50 energy is uh, acquired, and the Observer does go down, but he's seen everything he needs to see from this position. And behind this, Rain has opted for a quite an early third Nexus. Through everything he's seen, command center first, into the barracks in a pretty decently timed factory in Starport. How much of a risk is this, and how much does the Warp Prism play into this game? I think it's going to be very important. If he, this doesn't do any damage, Teja is going to be in a great position. I love that Teja threw down the third command center, and this wasn't seen by Rain yet. 
In the game that Rain tried to do this War Prism aggression against Bomber when he played him, this is the only game that he lost, actually. And uh, he lost it quite hard, so uh, yeah, I think it was an Achillean waste. So this game, uh, he's going to have to execute it a lot better. I like that he went for such a quick third, by the way. This was a very, very quick third, like nine minutes. It's going to get spotted, though. There's a Marine about to go up there. But yeah, look at the composition of Tija. He's got only Marines right now. He has to wait for Medivacs to, to be able to start on doing any damage. And look, those Medivacs now, they're being uh, boosted across the map. But the, the War Prism is going to fly into the main of Tija. There is no turret there. And his units are completely out of position. Yeah, nice drop here by Rain. Going to get a couple of SCV kills. Everything is waypointed to this location. At the same time, on the other side of the map, Tija oh, is there. Oh, could get force fielded. Double Colossus. The Medivax are there to help out with a bit of an evacuation. But at the same time, Zealot's causing havoc inside this main base. Picking up uh, eight, nine kills here. Yeah, the army supply ran off 52 to 42 uh, in Tejas' favor. He's going to steam in there. And nice flank. Oh, nice flank coming in by Tejas. Is he going to be able to get one of these Colossus? One goes down. Oh, my God. He gets both of the Colossus. A massive move from Tejas. Excellent flank. And not only does he get the Colossus, he gets the protection to the third Nexus. So all of a sudden, Rain had everything. And it just slipped through his wow. fingers. It slipped through the cracks. Everything Rain had is gone. Rain never started uh, Blink or Charge for some time. So he didn't have any of these in support. He had to make Thermalance earlier. And I think, I wasn't paying attention, but I think Thermalance finished as he lost his Colossus. So can he hold here? He has to hold if he wants to be able to stay in this game. He's oh. killed a lot of SCVs. He's actually ahead on Walkers right now. This is, this is really weird. 56 probes to 47 SCVs. Teja has got his third base now. He's going to start throwing down the bunker there. And Rain, he's going to have to re-expand. Whoa! Bit of an attack here. Force fields do come in. Looks like Rain is going to survive here with that Colossus. For now, as long as he keeps on opening Zealous to keep protecting it. A stim forward here, trying to bring it down. Oh! Is it going to go down? It isn't. Oh, pick up by Teja! And actually goes for the Colossus. Is he going to get it? Oh! Teja picks up with the Medivax and gets a Colossus that didn't seem like it was going to be available to be picked off. But at the same time, Rain is dropping and he has killed a lot of SCVs too. 12 SCVs have gone down, destruction in the mineral yes. lines. But Todd, tell me, who is leading? Who is winning in this game? Teja. Rain's lost a lot, Teja's lost a lot. Yeah, Teja is, is winning by far right now, but when behind Dark Shrine and Rain, he knows that. He's already got his War Prism across the map. He, the Dark Shrine is going to finish in... Uh, 30 seconds, and actually, if Rain warps in three Dark Templars now, he sends one in the third, one in the main, and one in the natural. There is only a turret in the natural right now. Teja could be in lots of trouble. He has to save energy here. If he uses his mules now, those Dark Templars are All gonna right. do so much energy. Eight seconds to the Dark Shrine finishing. All right, there is uh, mules being called down, Todd. They've been called down from the main, from the natural. There is no scans oh available. DT getting walked in here from the warp prison. Oh, if I can a Vikings heading towards the right. Prism. Can, can, can they get dropped oh in? Because God. this is Rain's opportunity back in this game. He the has Vikings. no proxy pilot nearby. All right, well, the DTs are in. All of all the Marines. One DT, just one single DT. Oh my God, a big drop inside the main base here. It looks like uh, Rain does have a few units here to deal with this. And there is a scan up at the third base of Teja. You should be able to defend against this. All right, well, oh, oh, some units may go down here. One medevac does fall. Whoa, a scrappy game by both players here, losing a lot of SCVs again. 22 SCVs have been killed. If it wasn't for that warp prism, I think this game would have ended. Yeah, but uh, Teja, such a brilliant move to send a Viking there. This changed everything. I think he might have lost there, or at least he might have... He would have taken so much damage if this hadn't happened, if he hadn't killed this warp prism. Because now there was mm. only one Dark Templar sent into the main. And Teja just got a scan at that moment, so he, he sniped it very, very quickly. Only the Zealots in the third base got some kills on those SCVs. The big problem surely must be the investment in the DTs. He's keeping him away from the Templar Archives coming down. And with double star puts in and Vikings on the way, and they're rising up fast. There's only two, but they are going to be three, five shortly and more. And does, it, it, does this not make Rain very vulnerable before Storm is ready? Actually, he reigns now. He's got Colossus. And he's got a lot of Blink Stalkers, so he's actually going to be in quite decent... Oh, this Dark Templar almost makes it, but barely not. And uh, we are going to have a drop in the main. I think Rain is in a decent position. If he defends well here and reaches Storms, he's going to be in a great position, I think. All right, well, let's see if he can continue to hold on, because these two drops have gone undetected so far, I think, here. Rain has a really good income across these three bases, by the way, because of the amount of uh, SCVs that have gone down. Oh my gosh, I don't think there's anything here to defend. No, Units have been warped in. Units have been warped in inside the main base. The third Nexus! Is the body broken down? Oh, Rain loses his third Nexus again here. 
Fantasia with a great play. I mean, that's a decent pickup, I guess, for picking up one medivac, but losing the third Nexus. Yeah, uh, Rain, if he wants to do something good here to catch up or just to come back, uh, he has a probe on the top right hand side of the map. He needs to start proxying some pylons and send some zealot in the third base of Teja, because right now, you want to keep on harassing like first mm -hmm. dose every single time versus Teja, and you want to keep on sending zealots to do some damage. Otherwise, you're just sitting there defending all the time. And you can do a lot more than that, especially on three bases. So although Rain is doing long distance mining right now on his third base, this is one of those possibilities that uh, he should use, in my opinion, if he wants to be able to stay in this game, because Teja is going to start pulling ahead on supply. And you never want that to happen when you're playing against Teja, because he controls his units pretty well, usually. What a, uh, a good game this one is, with Teja currently leading this best of five, remember, first of three games, is uh, going to go on to the semi-finals, the quarter-final here of the WCS Season 2. And the scan goes the down, yeah, he sees the high Templars here, and he does start to, well, he's already got Mobius Rack to finish up, I'm sure he'll start his ghost production soon. Yeah, he doesn't have Seagull 1 yet, though, so I don't think he should attack now, unless he thinks Storm isn't ready yet, but it is ready. Rain would be very happy about that, and Teja is going to go for another drop, this gets spotted by the Pylon, I think Teja is just going to abort. Yeah, abortion uh, is cold there. Can Teja fight? He can't fight here before ghosts are ready, surely. Yeah, not. probably not, unless Rain moves out and, like, fights in a really bad concave, I don't think Teja should fight. Well, so far, 163 supply here for Rain. Still on a decent income now. He's got that third Nexus back up and running, but he, I'm pretty sure he could have been at 200 supply by now if he didn't lose that Nexus. And Taser at 183, really posturing up. 3-3 three, three on the way for him. And now starting to get those Ghost of Fourth Command sent to, well, there's a bit of downtime here. Because Rain, as you said, doesn't really want to move out and then yeah. get attacked. And Taser's waiting to get his Ghost before he can do anything. So. There is a bit of a, a slow period for this game for the time being, but it's going to ramp up in speed very soon once again. And look, proxy pylons have been made on the top right-hand side of the map. Rain, he's finally reached his comfort zone. He's, gone, he's got two Templars and lots of Zealots in the main to defend against any kind of drops. And he's got Templars in position in lots of places. So if you look at his vision now, he's actually got a bunch of observers outside of each base that he's took. And uh, he can see anything headed his way. I think he's just going to look to take uh, a fourth base mm. and keep on massing from there and start sending Zelos uh, in the third base of Teja. Look, three Zelos are being walked uh, on the top right-hand side already. Well, one observer does go down there as Teja starts to move forward as he starts to add these ghosts into his composition. Nice. nice. Oh, on the edge of the scan there. Gets that, uh, that snipe. Oh, multiple snipes coming in here by Teja. Dropping that high Templar count. A couple of headshots coming from these ghosts as he scans and sees a couple more in position. You cannot zealots. afford to lose any more high tempos, really. Another observer goes down, you, you know, bring up the point and Zealot's coming in, but there's a ghost here, there's four Marines stemmed up. Uh, a good EMP there onto these oh. Zealots. The 3-3 three, three is about to finish. I think Teja might have waited for that, but uh, he's pulling back somehow. He might think he doesn't have enough to defend against these Zealots, but he does. He should rewall that bunker, by the way. Mm. If, uh, uh, is he going to send up some units to clear these pylons? It, uh, it would be a smart thing to do. The problem is that uh, Rain will warp in some Zealots. Yeah. Depending on how many units there are, he yeah. would need to send too many to make uh, to make this work. And then Rain would just maybe attack, or uh, he would put himself in danger if he did that. Well, Rain with the observer there on screen knows exactly where his opponent is. Not anymore. As uh, that observer does get picked off there, eagle eyes by Tasia sees all the observers. <laughs> always has done. Eagle eyes, the scan. Eagle eyes always gets those scans down, but the high tempo move forward. A scan goes down immediately. Another observer to the left, that's probably going to get picked off here, and it does get picked off. A storm to initiate Whoa, here. Oh, good EMP. Nice feedback. And yeah. nice EMP as well. EMP on two of those high tempo. Another storm comes down. Tasia, oh, does get a decent EMP on two of the high tempo. There's still a lot more left. Rain does have plus three armor. Doesn't have too much of an attack upgrade here. But Tasia's at 3-3. Three, three. And Tasia, he has a fourth base already. So look, his bank is going to start going up very, very quickly. And look at those two goals. This is so smart. He's about to have, he's about to have cloak. Uh -oh. And I think there is no observer. There is no observer right now on the map. And Teja has cloak. He keeps on scanning. He's waiting for Rain to come up that front. He wants it to happen. He wants to cloak his ghost and EMP and snipe every one of those Templars. And uh, Rain knows about that. I think he yeah. should realize here that he doesn't have any ghost and uh, any observers. He makes one immediately. He queues another one, but he's actually already maxed. Yeah, already maxed. He only has one observer and the scans keep on coming down. This could be very dangerous here for Rain. He's going to have to play this out so, so delicately if he's not going to take any losses. Two more high tempo do go down. The fourth base again denied here. Meanwhile, as you say, Rain, uh, I'm sorry, Tasia is mining from four bases. A lot of command centers coming down. Another observer has started. Tasia waiting patiently. 
Here we do have a couple of storms come down the right side. Do get into the Vikings. Deja is content with the current situation. He's got a force base. He knows that his opponent doesn't have one because he's got some marine on the top left hand side. So he's basically going to endlessly deny that force base of yeah. Ren from being taken. And Ren, he's going run to run out of money at some point. If he doesn't attack, uh, it's going to be so hard for him to win. He has to attack at some point. And Teja is only waiting for that with the nice concave every single time and the ghost in position with the perfect snipes and EMPs. This is the Terran versus Protoss art of war here between these two players dancing with death. As both of them, one mistake, one error, one misclick. And you're a loser here. I, I do not want that to happen. I actually think the composition of Rain is really bad. He's got only two Colossi. You need at least five or six against this composition. But Teja, he doesn't have that many Vikings. He's going to be perfect for him. Well, he scans ahead of time once again. Teja getting ready to go. A couple of nukes are being researched here by Teja. We'll see if they can come into play. Here comes the Cloak. Here comes the EMPs. The Storms are good, but he can't see anything. There's no observers, and the Ghosts are just causing havoc here. And oh boy, oh boy, Teja wins the fight, and the Observer's on its way, but... It's still out of position here, and again, Teja just takes the high ground. If Rain was to fight up there, he had to retreat. He would have lost the game there yeah. if he took that fight. And Anouk zones out, and oh boy, oh boy, this is tense indeed as Teja back to 200 supply. Everything's healed up now with these medivacs healing everything. Rain taking losses. This is such instant play by Teja. He's positioning, everything's perfect, and Rain's going, oh, he's really thinking about it right well, now. Well, there's an Observer, and does survive <laughs> for once. You know, Rain's not going anywhere. He's not able to make anything work in this game. I think he needs to take uh, his... Is he going to fight? Is he getting impatient? I Is think he has to go for it at some point. There's a lot of ghosts here. All the observers on the left-hand side. It's gone again. There's no observer. There's one right behind it, actually. <laughs> One right behind it now, so it is again with this army. Look at Rain's saturation on his third base. He's got way too many probes there. He needs a new base. 39 out of 24 probes on his third base. The income quite heavily wow. in Tasia's favor, and Tasia's about to take another base on the right-hand side here. Rain needs a base. He needs to take another Nexus here. His natural is mined out now. And I think Tasia realized that even if Rain now takes a fourth base, he's just so far ahead on economy, and he's got his composition that he wants to go for. He's got his nukes. He's just going to throw down command center, start sacking SCVs, and from there, I mean, he's going to have so army. much supply. All right, well, another scan goes down here for Taser on his army, getting rid of observers, another one across to make sure he knows where his opponent's army is. And he is taking the fifth base here. The walker counts actually quite even right now, but I think if Taser starts to setting, let's say, 20 SCVs, he's going to have so much army supply. Oh, nice storm. Nice storm coming here, a little bit of efficiency. In trade off the two high Templars, the ghosts do look more aggressively towards sniping off anything they can get. And that pylon aren't going to warp in two zealots, and they're going to get into the mineral line before that plant tree uh, fortress is ready. But it is ready now, so it's not really going to do anything, unfortunately. And the turret's up there as well, so that's a bit of a nuisance. And he's going to take out the pylon. What do you mean not going to do anything? The planetary fortress lost more than 100 hit points, man. That's pretty if good. Only it couldn't get repaired. <laughs> and Teja, man, he's. He's been doing so much work. I'm actually going to watch the game a little bit with his view because this is so impressive. He keeps on scanning. Mm. He never got stormed too heavily. Unlike uh, Alive, he's been able to defend every single one of those storms. And uh, I think there was two decent storms made and about 20 Templars killed already. How many Templars were killed in this game? 14 already. And how many good storms did you see? Not too many. Not too many, man. 13 observers and 14 high Templar have been killed in this game. Only three Vikings and nine ghosts. Quite the trade-off there. As we're about to see again, Tasia march forward, scanning always. He sees everything. It's like Map Hack with the amount of scans he has, the amount of orbital commands. He never stops scanning, always knows where the High Templar are. One bad storm will ruin your day. And again, an evasion. But a nuke has been called down here by Tasia. The ghost on the right hand side aiming for the high ground. Wow. Unfortunately, nice. this High Templar. Oh, oh. He's going to take out the pylon in one of these cannons, I think. This reminds me of a game on Taldarin. <laughs> Calder and Alter, it may have featured you and it may have featured Happy and it may have featured Day Nine's voice death. As uh, we have more nukes coming down onto this position from oh, the low ground. And Rain is going to try to claim the middle watchtower to get a good uh -oh, engagement. They're both about to take the same place. He scans and Tasia wants to fight every day of the week here, but Rain's very scared. Here comes the SCV sacrifice. Tasia started losing a lot of SCVs. He's going to lose even more now. Tasia's army supply. Oh my god, 145. But same thing for Rain. This is Clash of the Titans here. Uh, both players. Oh, the Templars! Oh! Oh! Oh, oh. my. Oh. This is not good for. A bit of miscontrol there, as that's another 
Pot five added to the total here. They keep on dying as the ghosts really just keep their lives alive and keep on going, keep on trucking away as another nuke is called down here on the high ground. Pressure mounting from Rain. But what does Rain need to do? All right, if, 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 if a dream scenario is to happen, what is it? He needs to get a perfect engagement. If Teja would attack into him, it would be perfect. But Teja's not going to do that. He's going to let him, uh, he's going to wear him down. He's just going to keep on nuking. These nukes are very cost effective. He keeps on killing pylons. Uh, cannons as well, and there's going to be no more detection soon by those cannons uh, left for rain. He needs to ca those cannons uh, as well as his army to help defend against this, uh, any potential attack here. And look at the Vikings now, they are 3-1, I mean, they're going to take out this Colossi so quickly. Rain has only got 500 gas in the bank. For a 31 minute game, it's a sad thing to see. He's not going to be able to remake too much of anything here. There's uh, another observer's dead and that High Templar being chased, but seems like it is going to escape. A Storm comes down on the right-hand side, does get a Ooh, chunk of these ghosts. Lots of damage uh, done onto those ghosts here. And if you look at the composition of Rain here, this is not the composition you want to have in this kind of 200 maxed army supply. He's got way too many Zealots. He needs to sack them, send them across the map to try and do some damage. He doesn't have enough Stalkers. You need up from 10 up to 12 uh -oh. to help against the Vikings. Not enough Colossi, just three. So I think if Teja fights here, he just wins. You think this is a big problem because of the, the, the starvation of bases, the lack yes. of gas that he's yes, had? Yes. He's, he's forced into a lot of zealots, it seems here. And oh, a blink boat. Is this going to be it? The EMP's blank and everything. Good retreat storms there from Reynu. Keep Teja away for now as the Vikings take critical damage and will need to be repaired off there. And Rain stays alive for a little bit longer here. But Teja's expanding all over the place. Yeah, he's got a lot of bases, but I mean, He's gonna have to win a fight at some point, so he sent back his Vikings, he's repairing all of them right now. That's very, very smart. Instead of just losing them, he's just gonna repair them and... Uh, I don't understand, Teja, he just needs a perfect engagement, he's not able to get it so far. Why did it look like it, it was what he wanted to happen the entire game? So although Rain's composition is not that great, he was able to get good enough storms off in the previous fight that... Uh, it it kind of looked bad for Teja for some time, so he had to pull back for now. All right, well, this game continues on here. More and more Colossus are being added into the army. As you said earlier, that was needed to happen, and it is starting to happen here. Oh, he's going to sack some Zealots uh, onto this third base of Teja, and that's really, really smart. He needs to replace those with some Stalkers, maybe a bit more Archons, but I don't know, there's just so many Ghosts. He's, he's actually going to pick off that Planeter. It's a, it's a bit of a win there for trading off. Well, Teja has, like, so many bases at this point, that I don't yeah, think I guess he even minds. Matter, yeah. And uh, well, this is so smart, what Teja is doing. Even if he kills this base and then loses his army, he's gonna trade well enough that Rain's economy is gonna be so low that... Look, behind this stage, how much money he has. This is ridiculous. He's getting so many command centers. Rain needs another base. It's been the moral of this story. Rain needs a base. Rain needs to expand here. And Rain is very active out in the open. Pylon's been put down. Oh, he's got a middle. Teja has to be very careful here. He needs to scan perfectly. And Templars might come from every single way uh, around his army. He's actually going to go up to a high, high ground here, kind of re retreat for the moment. Well, Zealot's coming down into the natural as well here. A single ghost isn't going to be able to do too much here. A couple of scans do come down, and Rain postured up very strong in the middle. But remember, he doesn't have too much money behind this. He still needs yeah. another Nexus to be able to get the gas to replenish Colossus, to replenish High Templar, to make Archons. And you know what, Rain, he's got only five Templars right now on the map. This is a very low amount. Mm. These five Templars very easily could get EMP'd and sniped, and then, I mean, he loses the fight very, very hard if that happens. Well, that ghost takes a, a bit of a hit there. Army supply is in favor of Teja after sacrificing a lot of SCVs here. And well, he cloaks up, he moves forward, a storm keeps him back for now. Two ghosts go forward in hope to get that high Templar. 165 army supply by Teja, 149 by Rain. Wow. We're going to have the Clash of the Titans very, very soon now uh, between those two players. And the Colossus count is actually very scary considering the, the amount of Vikings that Teja has. Seven Colossus here compared to uh, 15 Vikings. Couple of storms, maybe if these stalkers blink in the right position, things could go in Rain's favor. Teja is still leading this series. Three observers with this army as well, so he is quite equipped for the time being against the cloak ghost. Ooh. A good storm there. But he is trading off these high templars. I'm seeing one picked off here and there. He's down to four. This is so tense right now. One single mistake and you're out. Or at least you lose this game. And uh, neither of these players want to come into a huge fight just yet. But I think it's coming soon. It, uh, it's been coming a long time here, and it's going to be a big, mighty one. But the problem is, I think it's going to end really fast one way or the other, depending on this. And 
Tasia's army supply. All right, in StarCraft, you can have 200 <laughs> supply of workers and army. Currently, Tasia has 170 army supply, just 30 in workers at this point here. Oh, decent storm on those Vikings, take a bit of damage all in high yellow health for the time being, but still better than nothing there. The Observers move forward, three of them actually, and they're all going to get picked off for every single one of them. Oh, no one does escape. A blink forward here, focusing down the Vikings. That's going to be one crucial point for Rain to win. They are oh. microing their heart out, man. This yeah, is this incredible. Is they are just staring at each other and they're just sending some units in every single time. And oh, the Templar has been spotted. Oh. Gonna be able to storm twice. Good storms coming in. And a couple of high Templar do get traded off. Is this the fight we want to see? No, it's not, as Rain does retreat once again here. But not too many high Templar here for Rain as Tasia decides to take the high ground. EMP's covering his retreat here, or at least covering the access for Rain. High Templar on the left hand side. Scans come down. Great EMP's, great snatch by Tasia. And this is it. Finally, after 38 minutes, the battle of the Titans will happen. Tasia 160 supply. Rain is taking critical damage. Tasia is pulling in the stops here. And when the money has behind it, Rain is dying. GG. Wow, what a game. 40 minutes long. 20 minutes of that dancing with each other. And finally, after 20 minutes of that dancing, it was a 30 second fight and Rain lost that fight. And Tasia takes a 2-0 lead in this best of five. I thought Alive, which is first, was the highest level PvP that I have seen recently. I'm sorry, boys, but I have to take it back. This is this was ridiculous. This is the best Terran versus Protoss play that I've ever seen. I think Teja being so patient. Uh, I have to say, there was a point where I thought he might have given a little bit too much time to Rain to maybe come back into this. I mean, he was he had him starved. I don't know if this was the right time to take this many bases, as we do see uh, the winning moments by Teja looking very happy, obviously as. As Rain... Oh, he is happy, man. He is absolutely how, how happy. How do you qualify Rain's look there? Uh, oh, okay. Rain is, is devastated. Yes. He's lost two games in a row. He lost four games in a row right before coming to this tournament in the finals of the Korea Premier League. He's now lost six games against Terran in a row after arguably a lot of people saying that he was the best Protoss versus Terran player out there during his run through the WCS Korea Premier League, but things have just been flipped upside down and it is not working for him. Why, why does that make Teja? <laughs> it makes Teja... A beast. A beast and is having one of the best tournaments he's ever had. He's beaten Innovation 2-1 in earlier rounds. He beat Duck Duck the European Champion 2-0 easily and is currently leading against Rain 2-0. For this next map, which is Akalon Wastes, what does Rain need to do to prevent the whitewash, the 3-0? Uh, I don't know. This he, There was a time where in the previous game I felt like he was almost coming back, but Teja is just too solid overall. Rain is the guy who's supposed to be super solid. He's the defender, the guy who gets to the composition he wants, and then he makes it work, but he never made it work. This was the opposite uh, here. Teja was the one leading the game the entire time, doing some drops, uh, getting his perfect composition, not making a single mistake, uh, unless finally he started getting his army a little bit stormed left and right. I have to say, after killing 14 Templars, getting stormed once or twice, I can forgive it. <laughs> I've seen Terrans uh, get stormed a lot more than that uh, from the first 14 Templars. Boy, oh boy, after Jaehyung versus Naniwa, I didn't think we'd see a more epic of a series, but this one is living up to it right now as Tasia, Liquid Tasia, takes on SK Telecom's reign in this best of five quarterfinal that is time to begin. Map number three to fight for that trophy on stage. One step closer every game, one step closer. And right now, it's Tasia that's making the distance, getting closer. Just one map, just one map, and he's in the semifinals with a whitewash over one of the best Protoss players worldwide. And that Protoss player is here. Could be his last time, let's hope not. In the red. Up here to the top left, it is Rain! And I, I, I don't think anybody can agree with me here. This guy is performing amazingly at the Season 2 Finals. This man, his name is Teja! Teja is so impressive. And he's actually sending back his SCV. 
Does he go for barracks near his commensator? Oh, commensator first, I think. On Akinon West? Really? Well, I mean, this... I guess he, he's two games ahead and like... You don't expect Rain to really go for some kind of proxy, which is yeah. pretty much the only thing that hard counters this kind of commencer in the first play. On this map, after being down two maps, I don't think Rain is ever going to go for a proxy uh, to try and counter commencer in the first. So, possibly a very nice move here by Teja going for this, but Rain is going to go for the early scout. And uh, he's going to be able to spot this. And then from there, I think he's, he just throws down a very quick, mm -hmm. own natural, probably even without mining gas. Or uh, do you think? He might tilt and do something crazy here, like a four gate or something like that? No, I, I don't think so. I think he's got enough experience here to, to not do something like that. Even though I guess it may be a little bit frustrating for him to see this, but I think he should be just looking to get a Nexus. Yeah, he's not mining gas. And uh, this, you know what this reminds me of? Rain versus Innovation on this map in Pro League. And uh, Rain went for the two base, mm. three Colossus, and lots of Blink Stalker's timing against yeah. the third command center. So Teja here. If he goes for a third command center, I'm quite sure that Rain will go for the same build that he, he used against Innovation, which worked. Innovation just flat out died. He had a third command center, he had no Vikings, he moved out on the map, he got caught out of position, and Rain just capitalized on that mistake. He attacked and he finished the game. So we're going to have to keep that in mind, see where this, how this develops from there. What do you think is going through Rain's mind overall, apart from the strategy, the, the mindset and is he comfortable, do you think, right now? Like, what is he feeling as a, as a professional player yourself and you've played at the biggest in the, the biggest tournaments, man? What, what's going through his mind, losing two in a row in a best of five, playing map number three? Uh, it really depends if he was able to forget that he's down two maps mm. and uh, just try and play his best. If he's not able to do that, I mean, he's going to play a lot worse than uh, you would otherwise. But I don't know, he, I mean, he's a professional gamer. He's one of those, the best out there. Once the game starts, if you're able to only focus uh, on the strategies that you have to use and just everything that's happening, you forget everything else. You forget about the, the whole world. You're only thinking about StarCraft and winning that single game you're playing. That's what Rain needs to do here to play his best. All right, well, Teja has thrown down the third command center oh inside my. his main base. So this is the command center first, then double barracks, then third command center. It's ultimately a, uh, or if not one of the greediest builds he could have gone for. I guess the greediest would have been with just a single barracks, but Overall, it's a greedy build. Yeah, definitely is. Uh, quick Robo was made by Rain, and I think if he goes into Colossus, uh, he always gets a quick observer, which he sends across the map. That's what Rain, every single game, he does that. He's, his first observer always sees everything. And uh, if he gets the perfect scout on that command center, I think there is a good chance he might go for the push I talked about, which would be pretty much do or die at this point. And Teja, I mean, he's just been playing so well in general. I'm not sure it would work. Against a lot of other players, I would say, I will tell you right now, if he goes for it, it works. But Teja, he's been on top of everything so far in this series. These four Marines on the left-hand side, yeah. this is the definition of emotional tilt for Rain, I think. If he was to take any damage from them, they, they shouldn't be there. They're he's going to lose some probes, I think. Well, let's see. Let's see here. The probes run away. One goes down. Uh, two. And, and already, that's like... This is worth it. This is annoying for him, surely. And you know, this looks like Teja is getting a lot of Marines out right now. Like, Rain has to think, why did he send some Marines out like this? He, he had to think I would be out of position. I was. And why did he sacrifice some very important Marines? Or what could be some very important Marines? He has to be going for the standard tech pass. Three barracks into factory, into medivacs. No, he's not. He's got a third commander. So I think Rain right now, he might have no idea. And he's going to double forge. And this gets canned instantly here. <laughs> That scan, as the forges are thrown down, Teja sees everything. Double eBay? I was going to say it, and yeah, he throws it down, Teja, again. And look at the positioning, too. Yeah. This is, this is not going to be scouting, scouted early on. Usually you fly uh, yep. into the, the third base of your opponent and then into the main. So Teja I, is... Oh, my God. He's, he's just playing so well. Everything's going his way. Yep. But he's making things happen uh, for himself in this series. He's not waiting for things to happen. He's making them happen. So right now, we can clearly see that Teja's got a great build, a great setup. The worst thing for Rain is to lose this Observer. Yes. Because and, uh, he has no idea yet really what's going on. Yeah, there doesn't is no know scan. about the Command Center, doesn't know about the uh, Double Engineering Bay. There is no scan. The energy ah. on the three Command Center is 27, 42, and 21. And the, the Command Center that has the most energy is currently flying towards the third base. So that's not going to be denied. Ah. But he doesn't see the third Command Center because it's flying away. He's flying away from that observer right now. 
Does Rain go to the, that potential third base and spot it? I think he's going to see the double eBay for sure, and uh, he should be able to see that. But it's too he's late. Stopped. No, he's going. Okay. He's already he's already gone for the double forge. He hasn't thrown down the Twilight Council because obviously you don't have gas for everything. I think Rain is just going to take a third from there. Yeah. Break down. Uh, I mean, break down the rocks and go take a third. He's got another observer moving out. A scan comes down here, kind of. I, I guess sees what he's expected to see here with double forge and tech behind it. He's not meant to have a lot of units there. But uh, behind this, I, I mean, is Rain comfortable? He's seen everything now. He hadn't seen it earlier on. No, he's, not, he's not comfortable. <laughs> is it, so I mean, what, what's going through his mind upon seeing three command centers, double engineering bay, a lot of he barracks down already? He was probably as thinking, I saw it too late. God, I wish I had seen this earlier, then I could have done uh, some kind of timing or reacted to it quicker. Because mm. now he starts his own third base, but I mean, this is really late. TJ is already saturating his third base, he's ahead on walkers. And I mean, if you look at the income, TJ is on 2,000 right now. Uh, Mules obviously helping. He's getting his own double upgrade, he's getting his armor, he's going to be adding a second starport and barracks. And uh, TJ again, although he's not in the too much of a dominant position, he's, he's in a great position. Look at the scan, perfectly centered on the main base. He's going to see the timing on the Twilight Council, which tells everything about the transition that uh, Rain has to go into later on. So with this scan, I mean, does this open up some kind of timings for Tasia potentially? Does he, I mean, he's, he's got a second stop coming, he's got two, two upgrades, or does he just kind of play it strong? Uh, actually, oh, okay, Teja, he was throwing down bunkers at his natural. Mm -hmm. Dozelos not going to be able to do much here, by the way. Uh, Teja, he was making a lot of bunkers at his natural. I think he was afraid of the two base timing. Now he scans, he sees the third base. He's still not going to cancel the bunkers on his expansion yet. Mm -hmm. He's keeping them. I guess he has a lot of money anyway, it doesn't really matter. And Teja is doing so much scouting. Although he has opened with a very greedy build, he doesn't want to lose from there, he doesn't want to gamble, he wants to play very solid, and he wants to stay in control of this game. Alright, so the Twilight Council's finished, but we've seen nothing when it comes to the Templar Archives yet. As two two upgrades are on the way for Rain as well, but we have double starports in, there's two Vikings out, there's more going to start to make their way, and we already see the Ghost of Academy coming down, but... Teja, surely, he looks amazing right yeah. now. He looks absolutely fantastic. Oh, two observer right now above the army of Teja. If he had scanned, he would have gotten both, but uh, not going to choose to. And everything that Teja is doing is perfect in this game. So he's getting a wall on his third base with uh, depots so that Zelos can't get through. He's got his factory placed at like 6 o'clock to make sure he can spot any kind of war prism flying into his main. He's even got Marines in position in his main. And now he's going to start dropping. I guess he has to know there is an observer there for rain. There, is, there always is. But he does not have to commit to, uh, too heavily to this. He could just drop, poke, and then get out of there. But Blink just finished. Oh, actually, no. 20 Almost. seconds from finishing. Almost. And a couple of units do get walked in here. Colossus should uh, be able to push this back, and it does push this back. But still, Rain needs to kind of kill some units without losing anything himself, is uh, the kind of underline to this. Because right now, Tej has got a 20 supply lead. I'm pretty sure we'll see the fourth command center come down moments away. As, uh, there's absolutely no reason not to for Tasia. Flying forward with his supply count. Couple of supply depots coming down with that command sense would make perfect sense. By the way, can we take a look at Rain's uh, vision? Look at his vision on the map. He's got five observers perfectly placed. He sees the, the entire map right now. Even if Tasia scans, he would need four scans to basically clear the middle area against this observer. So Rain is going to enter this really defensive posture where it, on this map he should be able to take a force much easier than on whirlwind teja is most likely going to try to do the same thing he mm. he wants to do the dance again that like they did in previous game but i think he's going to be much harder in this game and on this map to make happen although he's going to have a timing window where he gets his first few ghosts and storm is not finished yet if he if he attacks now yeah well 2-2 two, two is just about a complete up here for teja 3-3 three, three has started for rain with his double forge he will have a bit of an upgrade lead going to be difficult to really make it work for him though it's nothing too big of, a, of a, an opening a timing for him to hit especially when Tej is so powerful I mean that army's absolutely magnificent at this point he's roughly 20 supply in the lead he's picking off a couple of loose stalkers in the middle of the map as well but we do have some pylons up on the other side of the map they are going to you know maybe get some harassment done but as you said there's a oh, fantastic Storm. supply depot wall here done. Storm is not done. It's not too far away though. Seconds away. There's force fields. He should be fine here. He's at 171 supply. Nice pick off on one of these Colossus, by the way. Teja is just gonna wait down the ramp. And actually the force is being denied again. I did not think that was gonna be possible on this map. Alright, well Teja is gonna move forward on the other side of the map. He's got his ghost leading the way. The MP! Oh the ghost! Actually hit the MP on the high tempo! There's no storm! 
There's no storm here. All the close is going to be enough. They're doing a lot of damage at the back here. Zealous do get warped in. Another ghost at the back may help out a little bit here. But as the Colossus fall, there's another high tempo. One storm comes in. But I don't know. I don't think he's got enough. Fantasia has just wiped the floor with that army. Yeah, I think it was completely worth it to kill the entire army. Right now, Duran on 35 army supply against 47. And his Colossus count is wasted. Look at the production type. 3-3 three, three about to finish. For Rain, this was the best timing that Teja could hit. And although he moved up the ramp and lost a lot, this was definitely cost effective in my opinion. Wow, great move there by Teja as he cleans up his third base as well. And he's only going to be building that army back up. Is it 127 army supply or not army supply or raw supply at the moment? Well, that's going to be rising and rising. And 3-3 three, three is now about to complete for Rain as well as a fourth base. But when Teja gets comfortable after cleaning up these pylons on the right hand side of the map where the counter attack came from here, He's going to start getting a little bit frisky again with his army, moving across the other side of the map again. I'm actually surprised Rain is even going for a course right now. His, his army supply was completely wasted. Everything died. He has to rebuild his entire Colossus count and Templars. But instead of that, he's getting Archons and moving across the map. Is he, is he going to go for this huge attack we, we never think that Rain will go for? He's got a single Templar with the Storm ready. That's it. Well, it's a little bit risky because if you look at the minimap, there's a lot yeah. of blue. And, and it's uh, all heading towards the red. Yes. Very simple StarCraft there for you if you didn't get it already. But there's a lot of blue and there's a little red. And right now, <laughs> Tasia's moving forward. He's going to pick up a high Templar. Well, that single storm is used, but doesn't really do anything there. Damages the three front marauders. And all of a sudden here, Rain's a little bit on the back foot again. The ghosts are ready to fight. They don't have Cloak yet. It's only just begun. Three Colossus, three Archons. Four Vikings. Four Vikings. So not that much uh, by Tasia. But if he gets a good Concave here and some good MPs, I think he could make this happen. Oh, oh, AMPs come down here on the Archons, on the Zealots, the Colossus at the back doing a lot of damage here. But if that front meat wall, the Zealots and the Stalkers disappear, the Clo oh, a Mule's coming down as well. Tasia thinks he can do it right here. Tasia thinks he can take the 3 0 and he's in search of those Colossus. A couple of Stalkers of all units get warped in here, but they aren't going to do too much. And well, they blink backwards to help protect it. Tasia is so happy right now as the last Colossus is about to fall. Tasia's ecstatic. I think he has that feeling, Todd. I think he has that feeling of a 3 0. More Mules are coming down. Down. Oh boy, oh boy, 130 supply, the last Colossus is here, and well, the fourth Nexus is dead. It's 65 army supply to 21. Rain is in disbelief. GG! Tasia applauds himself for a 3-0 over the WCS Premier League number two. Wow, what, what insane play, insane turn, display of skill here in, in this match. I can't believe Ter uh, Tasia took this 3-0 versus one of the best Terrans versus Pearls there. And look at him, he's so happy. He's so happy and he the crowd are applauding his absolutely amazing performance. Three games to nothing. Tasia goes to the semi-finals. Oh boy, oh boy, look at that smile. <laughs> it lights a thousand candles, that smile. It's not coming off anytime soon. It's not coming off anytime soon until he goes into the semi-finals where he would face off against Bomber or Scarlet which of course is our last quarterfinal of the day. But overall, Tasia's made it to day three of the World Championship Series season two finals. And what a way to do it. Yeah, oh my, I can't, I can't believe we just witnessed that. We're so fortunate to have seen that. I mean, I know I'm a Protoss player, but this was such high level of play here. And here comes one of the biggest fights for Tasia in the game where he landed the EMPs on the High Templar. And look, he's already nodding it, he's already happy. Whoa. He was, <laughs> that was minutes, minutes and minutes before he actually won the game. But he was happy with that as he was fist pumping after an engagement that gave him an amazing lead and an amazing position to set himself up for that 3-0. I like how the engagement started and he's like fist bumping out <laughs> in the middle of the fight. Like you have he to took his it. hands off the mouse and keyboard just to make sure he could fist bump. And it looks like the winner's interview is ready. Chobra, take it away with Liquid Tasia. Here on stage with the winner against Rain 3 0 in the quarterfinals, it's Liquid Tasia. So very happy to have won that quarterfinal. And swiftly, too, we saw a 3-2, then a 3-1, and now a 3-0. Let's hear what the man has to say. 3대0으로 정의정 선수를 이기셨어요. 기분이 어떠세요? 어, 일단 상황에 가게 돼서 정말 기쁘고요. 지금까지 정의정 선수 한 대로 1승도 못했는데 이번에 3대0으로 
지금까지 하지 못했던 승을 이루고 또 정현종 선수가 1세트도 못하게 해서 정말 기분이 좋아요. You know, I'm really happy to be moving on to the semifinals, but even more importantly, I've never won a match against Rain until today, and I got to do it by making sure he couldn't take a single map off of me. So I feel really good for finally making this win happen against Rain. Give this guy another big round of applause, because he truly deserves it today. All three games, I think, were pretty iconic. Uh, with Teja versus Rain, and we saw a lot of good uses for Ghost. And let's talk to Teja about that. 저희 그럼 이번 매치에 유령을 굉장히 어떻게 보면 좀 다양하게 그걸 잘 써주셨어요. 또 핵도 써주시고 자 두째 게임 때 핵을 쓰기, 쓰기 시작하셨는데 그때 어떤 계획으로 그렇게 전략을 짜신 거예요? 어, <웃음> 제가 한국에 있을 때 레더를 프로토스로 했었는데 이런 식으로 핵을 쓰는 테란을 만났었는데. 이런 식으로 하니까 되게 프로토스 입장으로서 좀 짜증나면서도 좀 까다로운 그런 핵 공격이 있더라고요. 그래가지고 핵을 한번 써봤어요. And so Teja says, back when I was in Korea, I was laddering with Protoss, and I actually ran into a Terran who just started nuking me left and right, and it was just so annoying and made me really feel hopeless. And I decided, you know what, it's gonna drag out. I might as well start chipping away at Rain and get into his head and start nuking his base a little bit by bit. And it worked out for Tasia, so props to him. So, 그러면 저희 첫째 게임에도 끝나고 나셔서 첫째 게임부터 굉장히 밝은 표정이셨어요. 끝나고서 그때부터 아 이번에는 좀 다르다, 기분이 다르다 그렇게 생각하셨어요? 네, 어, 한 번도 못 이겨봤던 선수를 이기니까 당연히 엄청 기뻤고요. 네, 그래가지고 되게 환하게 있었던 것 같아요. And I asked him, you know, you were smiling. Tejas been smiling throughout this entire match. If you guys were watching his cam, and he says, you know, I I took the first set off of a guy that I'd never beaten before, so I was very ecstatic ever since the first set, and that carried me through being really happy for the entire match. So how could I be on you there? 4강 진출 확정 나셨습니다. 그럼 상대가 이제 기다리는 두 선수, 최지성 선수 아니면 스칼렛 선수 둘 중에 한 분인데 혹시 그둘 중에 이 선수가 올라왔으면 좋겠다 그런 선수가 있으세요? 어, 이 선수가 올라왔으면 좋겠다라고는 선수는 없고요. 딱히 없고요. 네, 딱히 없어요. And Tasha talking about a semi-final matchup, he says, I don't particularly prefer either of the opponents that are preparing right now. It's going to be between Scarlet and Bomber, and Tejas says, you know what, either is fine with me. 그러면 어느 분이 올라와도 이게 자신 있으신가요? 어, 어느 상대가 올라와도 다 상대가 상대하기 만만치 않은 선수들이기 때문에 뭐 특히 어뭐 누가 올라와도 상관없을 것 같아요. And either opponent coming up will be a tough opponent, but I think I just have to play it out, and that you know it will go through smooth. So once again. It's going to be Liquid Tasia moving on to the semifinals, beating down Rain, who he has never beaten before. Give him another big round of applause, everyone, for Liquid Tasia, the third semifinalist here at WCS Season 2 Finals. And we had an amazing match, so why don't we get a little bit of a breakdown for Rotterdam at the analysis, analysis desk. Thank you very much, Cobra. And of course, once more, that was fantastic by Teja. Uh, but it also was kind of a one-sided series. So while everyone is getting ready on the stage and we are preparing for our next series, which is going to be Scarlet against Bomber, uh, I want to take a closer look at something that's been a returning thing for Rain throughout this tournament. And this is very uncharacteristic because, you know, I'm kind of a Protoss fanboy and I'm definitely a Rain fanboy. Uh, but this tournament, over and over and over again, Rain's most important units gets caught out of position. And, I am not exactly sure why this is, but this is just not really the rain I know. And I'm not trying to take anything away from Teja because I think Teja has been playing nothing but fantastic for pretty much the entire summer. He just keeps winning tournaments. But uh, just take a look at this game number two here in Whirlwind. And even though this did turn out into a very long game, in my opinion, this is already one of the most important moments in the game. If we can start this replay up. We can see, okay, Rain has a small army. This is always kind of tricky, but he just doesn't see this coming. This is a beautiful flank by Tasia, but Rain gets a little over eager with his Colossus, and he loses two Colossus at the 10 or 11 minute mark. That is so massive, and even though this game goes on and on and on, and eventually Rain was able to max out, 
He is maxing out while Teja is maxing out, but Teja has 4,000 minerals in the bank, has an unlimited amount of gas, has map control for a crazy amount, has crazy amount of scans, and that all starts with something like this. If it's a much more even game, uh, maybe, you know, they both max out as well, but then Rain is actually a lot richer, Rain can harass more, Teja won't have as many scans or orbitals available, and, uh, you know, I'm a little bit lost in the fact that this happened till, uh, several times in a series against Jay Dong, and this happened now again. He did play pretty cool against MC in game number two, but I think it's safe to say that overall this was not Reigns' tournament, but it might very well be Teja's tournament because uh, he looks absolutely fantastic. That's it for now from the analysis. Uh, Paul, take it away. Thank you very much, Roddy. Uh, good stuff there again from the analysis. Uh, desk or monitor as Todd's called it right now. Fantastic display of skill from Tasia with a 3-0 victory. He really lo is looking invincible. But there's one other guy that's been looking invincible this weekend and he's up next against Scarlet. It's going to be a terrific match. I can't wait to see how this one pans out. It's our final quarterfinal coming up next. Now, I had a few people say to me on Twitter over the last couple of days, you're so horrible to us because we have to work and we can't watch WCS. Well, good news, people. There is an iPod, I iPad and iPhone app that you can use, courtesy of Blizzard for WCS, where you can check out the latest streams, all the latest news and the results as well. And you can sneak it into work, use their internet, and you can tune in from there. It's all good. So if you haven't been tuning in today, you've missed some cracking games. Make sure you stay tuned because the next one is going to be epic. It's Bomber versus Scarlet. It's coming next.